<laughs> Shannon, Shannon, Shannon. Shannon Sharp, did not tell you when you winning. Did I tell you when you winning? That orchestrated demonic attack is going to come, baby. Welcome to the club, my brother. Welcome to the club. I want y'all to know at this point, I laugh. What does that mean? Think about everything that's happening. Think about everything that's happening with my life and my career right now. Is anybody shocked at what just happened in the courtroom? You shouldn't be. Think about everything that's happening in my life right now, guys. My movie 1992 comes out. Rave reviews. It was only released in 650 theaters. They were supposed to go straight to streaming, straight to DVD. And it's not because of anything that's got to do with my star power or status. That's the way the movie was acquired by the independent division of Lionsgate. It was never supposed to be a major release. It was purchased at a film festival. The movie comes out. It does bonkers in the box office with a very limited release. The reviews on the film are off the charts. We got an A minus cinema score. We on the Hollywood Reporter. We got, we got Ray Liotta's chair from the movie set. And we did this incredible photo shoot. The stars are lining up and everything is on fire. I go through the most traumatic experience ever and waking up to an unexpected divorce. Then I release my song, Wildflower, dedicated to my mother that also passed away on all days on Valentine's Day. And my song is number one most added to 54 radio stations, which is the largest amount of stations that's ever added any one of my songs. Now, Wildflower is number eight on Billboard. And it's flying and it's flying. All of my album sales with the vinyl on my website, Tyrese.tv, are off the charts. Everything is winning. And so what does the devil do? He throws another haymaker. Ah, boom, it's like a cocktail being thrown into your front window. Boom, your restaurant is winning. Boom, somebody throws a cocktail in there. Everybody's scrambling. Oh, my God. And all of a sudden, you go from the rave reviews of your restaurant to now your restaurant been burned down. The headlines change. Listen to me. I have not just been running around very vocal in public about my divorce, about the family law court system, about politics, about our soon to be God willing president and Kamala Harris but find somebody else in the industry that have been ready and willing to be as vocal as I've been about the Lord Jesus Christ. Find anybody who has been as vocal and outspoken about God and my beliefs in the Lord Jesus Christ. So is anybody really surprised that you woke up to the headlines that I was arrested, which I was not. I was never put in handcuffs. I was never arrested. I was put in a room. I was, I was held in a room. And my judge quick, I mean, my, my, my uh, lawyer, Tanya Mitchell Graham, quickly on her feet. He made his ruling about me being in contempt of court. And then my lawyer, ran downstairs and instantly appealed his ruling. And then with her quick punctual thinking, I got out of this holding room, no handcuffs, never arrested. I wanna tell y'all something. This is why so many people would rather privately pray, privately speak upon 
or talk about their beliefs in the Lord Jesus Christ because you're opening up a very different algorithm, as you would say, when you become this vocal about your beliefs in the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the attacks are coming, but they're going to be orchestrated. It's going to be like, oh, what? What just happened? What? And guess what? I'm not welcoming or inviting the attacks. I'm just letting y'all know that I stand firm on what I believe. When you stand firm, you don't falter. You don't, you don't fold. Think about this, guys. Find anybody who should just be focused on movies, on singing, on doing albums, on releasing albums, who's also comfortable with speaking up on Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, President Biden, or anything that's going on in the voter suppression department. Blatant racism, murder, corruption, the family law court systems that continue to remind us that it's a multi, multi, multi billion dollar industry. And they're not thinking about the lives that are being ruined, the families that are being separated from their kids or these ridiculous payouts of $400,000 a month in child support payment. Like when the fuck is the game going to end? So to the billionaire, to the millionaire, to the thousandaire, to the hundredaire, if I could properly afford an attorney and I'm continuing to get my head caved in, what do you think happens to somebody named Jacob who works at Subway or Chick-fil-A who's married with a child or children and he goes to court and he has to represent himself? I'm getting my head kicked in like every other man who steps in the courtroom. You ever notice that there's no such thing as footage of women? This has never been about man versus woman, but I have to point out the factual facts. You do not see any footage of wives and mothers in front of a family law court system boycotting. They're out there boycotting about women's rights, abortion rights, Roe v. versus Wade, and all of these, you could be arrested or abortion is abortions are illegal. They will be in front of that courthouse, millions of them, about the things that directly affect them. But there is no footage that you can find, no photos and videos of women and mothers and wives being in front of the family law court system. Picket signs, boycotting, screaming and yelling because the family law court system tends to always work in their direction. Now, I'm going to tell you all something. I was just in court last week in L.A., did I post about it? I don't lie, guys. I don't make shit up. There's no reason to post about anything that's going on in L.A. Because that judge in L.A. happens to be a judge that looks at the proof, allows the just due process, doesn't come in with a preconceived reality of what decisions he's going to make in and around rulings. And he allows the just due process. There is no bias. I don't care if you're a man. I don't care if you're a woman. What are you in my courtroom about? What do you want to present as exhibits and proof and evidence? And then he or she allows themselves to make a proper actual decision. I want to encourage you guys to look at a documentary called The Red Pill. I want to use my voice, my stage, and my platform to affect change. I can tell y'all right now, and I want y'all to listen to me. And this video is going to be seen around the world because this is the first time I've ever spoke up on this. 
I want to remind you guys that I was born and raised in Watts, South Central LA. This is what the 1992 movie is about, starring myself and Ray Liotta. I did not just wake up on a Wednesday and decide to be a civil rights activist, a vocal and outspoken person that's not okay with turning a blind eye on injustice. That's not who I am. The reason that a mayor wants to become a mayor is because he's got a problem with the things that are happening in the city that he either lives in or was born and raised in, and he wants to be the person that get into the mayoral role to directly impact and affect change. And all of the articles that's going to be written about him or her every step of the way is going to be because you got a target on your fucking head because you're in there directly impacting lives and affecting change. You're either going to love the mayor or you're going to hate the mayor, but he's still the mayor. You're either going to love the, 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 the president or you're going to hate the president but he is the president. He is the one, or she soon to be, and Kamala Harris is the one who got the job. Guys, guys, I know that there was some controversy around Black Lives Matter and what they ended up doing with the money that also ultimately, allegedly did with the money that was raised to get behind the movement. But I have to say that I'm still very proud of the movement. Because you guys have to be reminded that it's not easy to be in this black skin. It's not easy to be that black woman who was overqualified for the job. As a matter of fact, as far as what my research shows, Vice President Kamala Harris is the most qualified woman for the job but she's a black woman. So she's always gonna have to get pushed to the back of the line. And everything and everybody else, including Mr. Cheeto Puff Man himself, who's sitting on almost 85 felonies and criminal intentions and still got court cases coming up. Y'all still banking on this man to get the job, huh? I mean, as far as I was concerned, I heard that you can't even vote if you got a felony. Wait, I can't vote? This is voter suppression in itself. Who's got felonies? Black people. <laughs> Who's got felonies? Who's got the criminal records of life? Brrr, overextending list of criminal records. Black and brown culture. You can't vote if you have a felony and yet you can run for president and have 5,000 felonies? Come on, guys. Like, is, is, am I being punked by Ashton Kutcher right now from what the fuck is going on? Why was Kamala Harris even debating against a, an actual criminal? This is not allegedly a criminal. What is going on here? Listen, guys, y'all can make this about race if you want. Let me make sure I state the obvious. I got a problem with the war between Palestine and Israel. Not because I fall on either side. I am team humanity. And sadly, politics and whatever is going on in politics has now all of these innocent, innocent people being kidnapped, held as hostages. And there's all of these innocent kids and lives and blood being shed. I have not been vocal about Muslims versus the Jewish community. I have been vocal about an end to the war, a ceasefire, so that we can stop the blood from shedding. And you're now looking at my Instagram account being shadow banned. 
You're now looking at my Instagram account that has been stuck at 20.3 million followers for the last seven months when I normally get about a million followers a month. Guys, in closing, I want y'all to know, this is to the judge. His name is Judge Kevin M. Farmer. I want you to know, Kevin N. Farmer, that I forgive you. I forgive you. My court case is still being appealed because of all of your rulings that have been abusive, egregious, prejudice, disrespectful, and beyond the scope of the law. You can't do that, sir. You can't have me volunteering to pay child support without a court order at $3,600 a month, come to court finally after two years of waiting on a trial, a divorce trial, me and my lawyer are ready to present all of our proof and evidence that she's lied under penalty of perjury. She's this, she's that. We're ready to do our just due process. Literally before Samantha's lawyer spoke or before my lawyer spoke, before we ever presented any one piece of evidence, you know what Judge Farmer jumped up there on the bench and said? And we have transcripts of this. He says, hey guys, not verbatim, but close to it. Hey guys, listen. We can go the next couple of days and go back and forth and spend all this money arguing back and forth, but I've looked at Everything that has came in paperwork wise on both sides. And I pretty much already know what I'm going to do. What? What did you just say, sir? You already know what you're going to do. And then guess what he did? Exactly what he announced before we ever had an opportunity to get into our just due process. I am a tax paying citizen. I happen, listen, listen, I happen to be a celebrity. I got it. I happen to be black. I got it. I happen to be a successful black entertainer. I got it. I happen to live a particular life and lifestyle that creates jealousy and envy and people are loaning and desiring the life and the lifestyle that I live. But I got to remind you motherfuckers that I have been at this since I was 13 years old. I have never rode a coattail. I have never compromised my sexuality or my spirituality to get here. I have never had a camp, an entourage. I've never rode anybody's tail into success. It has been me and the Lord Jesus Christ and all of the favor that he has put over my life and my career that has helped me to will myself into success. Let me make it plain for the people in the back. Ain't nobody gave me shit. Nothing. I live on my knees. My mother lived on her knees. My grandfather was a man of God and a pastor, rest in peace. My current grandfather, who's still alive, is a pastor. I got that oil on me. And when you got that oil on you, your life can't be explained. How did you get here? If it's that easy to do a 30 second Coca-Cola commercial and have it to turn into almost 30 years of a career, why hasn't everybody else done it? So I'm going to get back to my point. Judge Kevin M. Former, I forgive you, sir. I have to take it up on God at this point. I've done everything and my lawyer has done everything that she can do to protect me. I want to say thank you to the Los Angeles Times for journalism, for true journalism. I want to say thank you to the Atlanta Journal for the story and the article that's about to come out. True journalism. The blogs and the clickbait and the podcast and people writing things on their Instagram, trying to create engagement, that's allowed. But at this point, this is about 
the Georgia State Bar. This is about the California State Bar. This is about saying that if I volunteered on my own after my wife left me at $3,600 a month for a one-year-old, how does a judge get on a bench and say, we're going to go back two years of you making a child support payment on your own with no court order, $3,600 a month for a one-year-old, and the mother makes $175,000 a month, and we live in Georgia, which is not even in the top 35 of most expensive cities to live in. So what does the judge do? He decides, I'm going to stick it to you the way every other family law court sticks it to fathers and men. These are factual facts. This is nothing personal. Research has shown that men and fathers and husbands go to court. It doesn't matter what your net worth is. You got a target on your fucking head as soon as you walk in. And it doesn't really matter what you show and present. Good luck. I'm saying that I forgive you, Kevin M. Farmer, because just like the Lord Jesus Christ, as he stood up on that cross and they killed that man, the last words out of his mouth. Forgive them for they not know what they do. He doesn't know why he hates me as much as he do, but I forgive you. Judge Kevin M. Farmer doesn't know why he has so many people appealing all of his rulings as we speak. But it's all going to be exposed and it's all going to be figured out. Listen, man. Everything that we are appealing, I've posted it, it's online, it's also very public knowledge. Look, man, we got court documents right here, you know? This stuff is never ending. It's never ending. I want y'all to understand, I never came into that courtroom saying, I'm me, I'm a celebrity, I could afford a top attorney, and all of this is going to work in my favor. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it don't. I also have to say respectfully that the family law court system in general needs a lot of reform and we need Congress to make some real changes in and around what's going on and have been going on in plain sight. But I also must say, because I'm a man of integrity, back in 2017, when my ex accused me of child abuse, because I spanked my daughter for the second time. My ex was granted a restraining order and I could not see or have access or communicate with my daughter for a hundred days. And she believed my ex because she came to the court and she was so convincing in and around the things that she accused me of. And this is a woman, female judge. So I believe now that she believed my ex and she ultimately said that whether it's true or not, let me do what I gotta do to shut down all communication and access from this man, from this father who is potentially abusing this child, which I never was. I spanked her with my right hand directly on top of her butt, on top of her pants. All of this proof and evidence was turned in. What I must say about a real judge who really allows the just due process is after doing a full trial in 2017, that same judge that granted a restraining order and granted a hundred days of not, no calls, no contact, I can't see and can't have access to my child. She heard the full trial. My lawyer is a top lawyer named Terry Ross. Top lawyer. The same woman who said restraint and order, blah, 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 shut my life down when it came to my daughter, Shayla. She did a full trial. She came to court with all of her proof and evidence. We came to court with all our proof and evidence that nothing that I was accused of ever happened. But you know what happened? 
because of the just due process, me not thinking that anything is going to work in my favor. You already believed her because she came to court and said it. So I already feel like I'm fucked. <laughs> but the fact that she twisted her own words and reversed all of her own rulings and ended up saying, this man is innocent. Nothing about the proof and the evidence of anything that was presented and shown says to me as a judge that this woman who might be crying, she might be emotional, she might be trying her best to present her case, but it ain't adding up. So we got to let this man go and we got to give this man access back to his child after 100 days and being completely shut down, my access was granted back to my daughter. That should have never been taken in the first place without proof or evidence, but instinctively the judge did what she needed to do. But I have to show respect to a judge who gave me and my attorney an opportunity to present the proof and the evidence that what I was accused of never happened, never was said, and was never done. Do you guys see what I'm getting at? There is an aspect of her rulings at the time that was prejudice, but she ended up flipping on her own rulings and I got access back to my daughter. Crying video later, what more do you want from me later? Me getting a complete beat down later. Me and my daughter's relationship could not be better, could not be more magical. In my house, I'm not Tyrese. I'm not a millionaire. I'm not a dude with cars in the driveway. I'm not a dude that's got big square footage house. In my house, I'm dad. And when they refer to me when they're not in my presence, that's my father. You can't put no price tag on that. To this day, Bernice King and Martin Luther King III refer to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as their dad or their father. This was the busiest man that I could ever know for his short amount of time that he was on this earth doing all that he came here to do. You know, my dad was the, you know, my father was the type of man to those are the things that we as fathers hold on to for dear life. You know why? Because you can't purchase your way into creating a feeling in your daughter or your son to refer to you or think of you as a father or dad. That is a sanctuary that you want to protect at all costs. Now, I want y'all to understand something. My lawyer... Tanya Mitchell Graham, may her father rest in peace. She lost her father just like I lost my mother to COVID. Her father was the strongest, most educated, most alpha, most in, in, the man of integrity. This man loved him some Jesus Christ. And my lawyer, a black woman named Tanya Mitchell Graham, loved her father. And if you talk to Miss Tanya Mitchell Graham right now about her father for all of two minutes, she'll tear up and break down and get emotional on the spot. There are fathers out here that really love their child and their children. They might be busy. They might be moving. They may not be as available and as present as the mother. But the love that we have for our kids and our children is undeniable. Until you step foot in the family law court system. So I'm going to tell you all right now. My Beautiful Pain album has been released. And the success around my album is more success than I have ever experienced in my life. Everybody that I've been texting and calling and tweeting and Instagramming and Snapchatting and doing album listening parties, 
and falling in love again and making love again and forgiving the person that you were about to break up with, going back to your husband, going back to your wives. I have done my job. Thank you, Jesus. I said to myself, God, I might be in a lot of pain. I might be dealing with a lot of strife. I might be carrying a lot of strife because my ex woke up one day and decided to leave me and take the baby with her. And now it's obvious that all she wants is money, 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 money. She never loved me. She was never in love with me. I thought I was the only actor in the relationship. Oh, no. My, 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 my. What is that saying? Fake it till you make it. And now she's got an attorney who's representing her for free. Coming up on four years. And although she makes $175,000 a year, he says that she's been paying three law firms $1,000 a month. $1,000 for three law firms. They're all at home rubbing their hands, banking on a pot of gold. Once again, from a high net worth individual. Not a black high net worth individual. A high net worth individual who happens to be a man. Because that is what the spirit of the family law court system is. I want you guys to do yourselves a favor. Women and men, mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, please do me a favor and watch a documentary called The Red Pill. It's about a feminist who sees everything through the lens of women who decides to do a whole investigation about men, about family law, about the court system, about any and everything that has to do with men because she's a feminist. And after she got deeper and deeper and deeper into her documentary, her worldview started to change. Guys, listen to me. I don't have a racist bone in my body. I am every bit of a black man that's passionate about my culture and passionate about where I'm from and passionate about my upbringing and my environment and the things that I've seen and heard and experienced. But I don't have a racist bone in my body. I don't hate Kevin Judge Farmer. I believe he hates me. I did not come into your courtroom, Judge Farmer, expecting anything to work in my favor because I showed up with a black woman who owns her own law firm, who happens to be one of the top, top lawyers, family law attorneys in all of Atlanta. I didn't expect to walk into the courtroom and say, oh man, he's got a top lawyer, he's rich, he's got money, he's got, he's got legal fees on tap, he's just rolling. I did not expect anything to work in my favor, sir. You know what I wanted as a tax paying father? I wanted my just due process. I wanted to be able to present my proof and my evidence and show that my prenuptial agreement is beyond extensive and you can't crack it. You can't crack the prenup. It's a prenuptial agreement. Prior to the nuptials, these are all of the things that we put in place. She had a lawyer and signed off on it. I had a lawyer and signed off on it. It's a prenuptial agreement. But y'all cracked the prenup, didn't you? You cracked the prenup. Your law firms, Mr. Adam Glickman, is asking me for $650,000 in legal fees to this day. Not $7,500. That's the new invoice that just came in. That's the new legal fee, $7,500. You guys are trying to get $650,000. That was appealed. Everything about what just happened in court the other day, that's now appealed. And we're waiting on everything to be appealed. Now, I got it. All of the judges know each other. I got it. All of the judges have relationships and all the above. I want you guys to know that this is when the Lord Jesus Christ, for me, kicks in. don't want anything to work in my favor. I just want things to be done.
according to the law. I don't want to be abused because of who I am. I don't want to be taken advantage of because I've worked my ass off since I was 13. I and my career started before most of you lawyers that are in the courtroom. Most of you judges didn't decide to become a judge until you went to, court, uh, uh, to, to college or something. I've been at it since I was 13 years old. So imagine showing up to court and feeling like I'm about to get no disrespect. I'm about to get financially raped right now. I'm about to get raped financially right in front of me in plain sight. And they're going to look at me after I get taken advantage of and say, OK, and what are you going to do about it? Well, whatever you want to do about it, you got to come back into this same courtroom, lawyer up again, pay some more retainers and try and get me the same judge to reverse my ruling after I've already made the ruling. Well, that's not really possible. Is there anybody, is there any way I can get another judge about this ruling that just killed me? No, if you wanna come back to court, you gotta come and see the same person who just handed you your ass. I wanna wrap this up by saying this. Listen to me, 1992, is winning the movie. The 1992 soundtrack is winning. The Beautiful Pain album is winning. Everything about the interviews from The Breakfast Club to uh, uh, Club Shay Shay to everything about this beautiful energy that's happening, I am winning. And while I'm winning, What's flying off my tongue in every interview? The Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you guys to pray for me. I want you guys to pray for me. I want you guys to pray for my family. I want you guys to pray for this journey that seems to be pretty unbearable at times. When it feels like I'm alone. I got people that love me that are calling me to say I'm disappointed. I got co-stars that are looking at the headlines change from 1992 rave reviews into the headlines turning into Tyrese arrested. Which again, I was never arrested. No handcuffs. I was never thrown in jail. I was never arrested. After the judge made his ruling, I was put into a room. And I basically had like five or six hours before I was supposed to be hauled off to jail. And he said, you need to figure out a way to come up with this money or that's where you're on your way to. And quickly, my lawyer ran down and literally appealed his rulings that he had just gave me. And because she was that quick on her feet, I was in there for two hours. And I went home. I want y'all to know that when you're doing things and the, the Lord Jesus Christ and God and your belief and what you feel and what you understand about the kingdom is flying off of your mouth. Oh, those attacks. Oh, my, 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 my. Those attacks. They're, they're, the devil is innovative. He'd be like, oh, look. Okay, look, 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 look at that. These fingers are solid with God. These fingers are solid with God. Oh, 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 there's an opening. Boom. Let me attack them this way. Let me attack them that way. Little, little piece of the window was left open. And the devil is going to slither his fucking demonic self in. And try and change the energy and the vibrations of what's happening. You went to go see 1992 in the theaters. You've been writing rave reviews about it. Rather you're a fan, rather you're a film critic, rather you are Hollywood Reporter or Deadline, Los Angeles Times, I thank you. And I hope and I pray that nothing about this random headline about me being arrested can change the way you feel about what you experience from this Lionsgate film that they did not have to release in theaters. And all of a sudden, you change the way you feel about the movie because of these random headlines. 
I want to apologize to my co-stars in 1992 because they woke up just like I did to all of the headlines about me being arrested when I never was. And there was a shift in the energy that we had going with our film. I want to also apologize to all of the singers, writers, producers, and people involved in my Beautiful Pain album because as we are all loving and enjoying the success of Wildflower and enjoying the success of Beautiful Pain, all of a sudden, the headlines change. I am accountable for the things that I say and the things that I do, and I am accountable for the impact that it has on people's lives that are connected to me. I know you guys have all been getting text messages. Anybody who knows me have been getting calls and text messages. Yo, man, Tyrese in jail, he arrested. I love you guys, but I want y'all to know in closing, the Lord Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I will continue to move firmly in my beliefs. And whatever attacks may come, I will deal with it. I say some dumb shit. I do some dumb shit. I make mistakes. I fall short. I do as a human. And I create my own headlines sometimes. Other times, I'm on the receiving end of the headlines that they want to create for me. I am responsible for the things that I say and do. And I am also responsible for the impact that I have on other people's lives from the choices that I make. Is somebody else willing to say that? Samantha? No. No, she's not. <laughs> this is the biggest threat right here. This is the biggest threat. This double album is the biggest threat. This double album Beautiful Pain, produced by Brandon Bam Hodge and the legendary David Foster. You see the name, you see the name, you see the name. You see the name, David Foster, right? This double album right here is why I'm under attack. Yeah. The success of 1992 is the reason I'm under attack. The success of my song dedicated to my mother, rest in peace, is the reason I'm under attack. Because I'm not only winning, but I'm winning while giving God the glory the whole time. I want to wrap this up with an encouraging word. I keep saying I'm going to wrap it up, but God is just speaking through me right now. And I'm feeling it and I'm just getting it all out before these thoughts end. I want to say to my attorney, Tanya Mitchell Graham, I couldn't be more proud of you for the father that you had that raised you as a woman. A woman of integrity who will say, even though I am a lawyer and I have to get in front of these judges every single day and I got my own practice and my own law firm, I cannot turn a blind eye on justice versus injustice. You, Tanya Mitchell Graham, you have my heart. And I want to praise God for you because whatever the outcome is, you are not doing this thinking about your own self-interest. You are actually thinking about all the other lawyers in Georgia. You're thinking about all the other lawyers who have to go to court with those high net worth mothers and high net worth fathers, hoping that these rulings that Kevin M. Former just put in place don't stand. Because if they stand, then everything about the family law court system laws in Georgia will change and never be the same. You, attorney Tanya Mitchell Graham, you are a genius. You are a strong, fierce, powerful, and very important woman in the legal community. 
And it doesn't matter how much bigger these other law firms are compared to yours. I praise God for all of your partners soon to come. Right now it says TMG. But you wait and see what God is about to do on the other side of this appeal. You wait and see. From here on out, the case law will say, Your Honor, in the case of Gibson versus Gibson, Your Honor, that's not legal, Your Honor. In the case of Gibson versus Gibson, retroactive and this and that, you turned a $3,600 child support payment that I decided to give my daughter on my own as a father, and you said, how much are you paying your child in California? $10,690 a month, which I've never missed one payment in eight and a half years, so we're clear. Oh, you've been on your own giving your child $3,600 a month? You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go back two years and turn that $3,600 into $10,690. Whoa, 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 hold on, Judge Farmer. Where did that number come from? The number came from California. Your Honor, what does, what does California and a, and a child support number that I'm giving my child in California have anything to do with Georgia? I'm not trying to hear that shit, sir. You and your lawyer, get your black ass out of my courtroom talking to me about my rulings. I'm the judge. I'm the law. Balls on the table. Bloop, bloop. Shut up and take that. $3,600 for two years straight. He goes backwards two years and he says, your 3,600 has to now become $10,690 a month from this point on. And we're going to flip your 3,600 into 11,000 from two years ago. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who you are, whether you're a woman or a man, but does that sound right to you? I don't think so. Wait, wait, so you're doing a child support payment and you've been waiting almost two years to do a divorce trial and you're giving your child $3,600 a month in Georgia where the cost of living is not in the top 35 in the country and her mother is a social worker that makes about $175,000 on her own? The actual needs of the child are beyond met. So why are you going to go back two years? and turn my 3,600 into 10,690. I'm very confused. But I can't turn a blind eye on injustice. So everything is being appealed. Everything about his rulings, his conduct, everything that he said, everything he didn't say, everything that he shut down as far as our just due process in the courtroom, it's all being appealed. And I've already leaked the documents. They're already out there. All you got to do is look them up. Shout out to the LA Times who actually attached the, all of the, the 20 pages of the appeals is attached to the LA Times article. Thank you for real journalism. Nothing changes without real journalism. And I want to tell you all again, I do not have a problem with that man. I actually empathize with him because I'm a man who believes in God. I am not responsible for racism. I am not responsible for a judge who obviously has a prejudice, not racist prejudice. I am, he has a prejudice against me. And it was very obvious from the moment he stepped in that courtroom. Because he said, I already know what I'm going to do here. Y'all can waste the next two or three days if you want. There's records of him stating these words when he came to the bench. I don't lie and I don't make things up. You already know what you're going to do with my case before we even present our case. Oh, OK. Gotcha. I don't think he's going to do that. After three days, he did that. Y'all just wasted y'all time and all y'all money. I've already told y'all that I, I know what I'm going to rule on. And I know what it's going to be. So I don't even want to be here. I got other things to do. I don't want anything to work in my favor. I just want my just due process. I don't even know if us appealing this case is going to ultimately be appealed. I 
just want my just due process. I don't want anything to work in my favor because I'm famous, I'm a celebrity, I got money, I live a particular life and lifestyle. I do not have a problem with that man. I don't know why he's became the way he's became. He's a husband, he's a father, just like I am. And he's a man. So it's really, it really hurts when someone who actually goes home to their family is in a courtroom using their power as a judge to break up families and cause traumas and strife and pains the way these judges are causing pain. Especially if you're a husband and you're a father. I have better expectations of you because you want to go home to your kids and your family, right? At what point did you lose sight with what I want to go home to? And what I want to experience as far as my interaction as often as I can without getting financially taken advantage of because I am a high net worth individual. Who needs $400,000 a month in child support? What child exists that needs that much money? Things have to change, guys. And I believe that God is using me to affect that change because most men and most fathers would not ever, ever want to sign up for this. You may think this is about me, but it's not. The outcome is going to be the outcome. I've been dealing with the family law court system for 18 years. And I'm still speaking up and I'm speaking out about the things that's happening, knowing that sometime you go to court and the judge understands and he actually or she or allows your just due process. Other times you don't. A judge can wake up one day and say, I'm in a bad mood and you're going to get your ass served on a plate. It's the way it goes. It's the way it goes. But I want y'all to know something again in closing. 1992, Beautiful Pain, double album. Produced by Brandon Bam Hodge and legendary genius David Foster is available on all streaming platforms. And I would love your support. It would mean the world to me if you were to listen to an album that I gave birth to. Because of my divorce and because of me finding love again and my girlfriend of almost four years, Zelly Timothy. I want you guys to listen to the beauty that I discovered in my pain. It's right here. And if you go to Tyrese.tv, if you go to Tyrese.tv, my website, you can pre-order the Beautiful Pain album. It's now live and the vinyls are being printed up right now. There's a small delay, but they're on their way. Small delay, but they're on their way. 1992 is still in theaters. Some of y'all don't notice, but we actually released the 1992 soundtrack. And everybody who has heard the Beautiful Pain album, drop some fire emojis in the comments. If you heard the Beautiful Pain album from top to bottom, drop some fire emojis in the comments right now, please. If you've seen 1992, um, what can I put in there? Right, 1992, if you watched the movie and you loved the movie. But I want to tell y'all, wherever you are in this life, wherever you are in the world, I pray over your, your mind, your finances. I pray you out of foreclosure. I pray that you re-spark and redevelop the relationship with your children. I pray for peace over your, your mind, your body, your soul, and your mental health. I pray that everything that you have been wanting and desire, I hope that the devil gets out of the way and the Lord Jesus Christ releases it now so that you get your breakthrough that you have been praying for. You have been doing everything the right way. And you are looking at bad people who seem like they're winning. 
All of these bad people that wake up every single day with ill will and malicious intent appear to be winning. And you're sitting back doing everything the right way. You're tithing in church. You're not running around overly promiscuous. We all got to have a little sex, but you're not over the top with it. You're a man and a woman of integrity. And you're sitting back waiting on your breakthrough, wondering why can't I get that job? Why can't I this and why can't I that? I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ blesses you with everything that you have been waiting for. I pray over your depression. I pray over your anxiety. I pray over the full duration of the pregnancy at your age. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that you find love after you've been single, male and female, for all of these years. And I pray, of course, that as you find love again, you're inspired by this beautiful pain album. I pray over all of the marriages who have had so many issues and conflicts over the years that you don't touch each other, you don't flirt with each other, you don't have sex, and you're just coexisting in a house. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ and this album re-sparks the love in the sanctuary of your marriage. I hope and I pray that the irritation that you feel towards each other just goes away, just dissipates. Thank you, Jesus. It's gone. I love you, but I don't like you. As a matter of fact, I cringe every time you walk in the door. We're going to get rid of the cringe in the name of Jesus. That's what we want. The devil wants to keep attacking us. And the devil is creative and innovative with his attacks. But I pray that everything that you want and you desire, write that book. Produce that song. Pick up that DJ equipment and get started now. You are next. Write that script. Write that TV show. Pick up the oil and the canvas and paint again. Go back to that park that used to make you happy. That put a smile on your face when you sat there looking weird with a loaf of bread just feeding the ducks. Let's get back to the things that bring us joy and happiness. You've been in that relationship and everything about that man or that woman has been suppressive and depressive, trying to shut you down and clamp you down from doing the things that give you oxygen. I pray in the Lord Jesus Christ that you get back to it. And in closing, I want to remind y'all that you don't know what the square footage of Dr. Martin Luther King house was. You don't know what his net worth was. You don't know the size of Dr. Martin Luther King's rims. You know why? Because none of that stuff matters. Who are you? What do you stand for? What impact are you going to make on this world before you take your last breath? That's who I am. Support Beautiful Pain 1992, the 1992 soundtrack. Stream the album worldwide. Beautiful Pain, Beautiful Pain. And please allow me to inject this love and this energy back into your house, back into love, back into marriage, back into relationships. We got enough divorce records and breakup records out there. I love you guys. Thank you all so much for everything. Pray for me. All right. You got this. You got this. Stay encouraged. Peace.